This video is brought to you by Captivating History. Rising from the ashes of the famous Roman Empire, the Byzantine Empire managed to rise in its eastern regions and survive another millennium. Although its identity was changed over time, this successor of Rome still rose as a dominant political entity of both Europe and the Near East. It experienced a series of ups and downs for roughly 11 centuries before finally crumbling down. Facing outside conquests, internal strife, and continued attacks, this venerable empire finally buckled, disintegrating in 1453 AD. The story of its fall is long and arduous and reminds us that even the greatest, most powerful empires will fall in the end. The story of the great Roman Empire, Byzantium's foundation, is the staple of every good history book. Emerging as an ambitious city-state and gradually transitioning into the Roman Republic, it spread throughout Europe like some Latin-speaking wildfire. Through increasing determined conquests, it was quickly becoming the world's largest and most powerful nation. Of course, we know that where there is wealth and power, there is greed. After a series of bloody civil wars, the Roman Republic suffered one of its biggest crises. Following the daring changes undertaken by Julius Caesar and his subsequent assassination, his younger heir, Caesar Augustus, became the first Roman emperor. The history of that empire is, without a doubt, turbulent and filled with strife and struggle for power. After roughly two centuries, it faced a series of critical crises that nearly made it crumble. The Roman Empire was split into two distinct halves from these troubles, the Western and Eastern Roman Empire. At the time, Emperor Constantine the Great decided to make Byzantium, later called Constantinople, the capital of the eastern half of the empire. That city would become the second most important city after Rome. However, when the Western Roman Empire abruptly crumbled and fell under repeated invasions from migrating Germanic tribes, the Eastern Empire, with Constantinople in its center, remained the final vestige of the once great Rome. It continued to struggle and rise for more than a thousand years, later becoming known as the Byzantine Empire. Constantinople was one of the most powerful cities in Europe. Situated on the European side of the Bosporus Strait, at the strategic crossroads between the East and the West, Constantinople grew into a sprawling and rich urban center. This ensured that it remained the capital city of the Byzantine Empire throughout its existence. That empire, however, would seldom experience long periods of stability. Throughout its history, it suffered from civil wars, internal instability, and outside pressures. This meant that its borders would constantly change. One of its greatest leaders was Justinian the Great, reigning between 527 AD and 565 AD this emperor's shrewd policies and ambitious expansion led to Byzantium reaching its greatest extent ever. It spread throughout the Mediterranean and solidified its power for roughly two centuries to come. But it is important to remember that history is always fluctuating, introducing new peoples and players into the story. New migrating peoples began emerging on the empire's borders. Franks and other Germanic tribes rose in power in the west, while the encroaching Slavs poured into the empire threatening Constantinople itself. The nomadic Bulgars also established themselves as a dominant force in the late 600s AD. With its resources constantly depleted, the Byzantine Empire had great troubles withstanding these incursions and pressures. The so-called early Muslim conquests of the 7th century AD saw powerful Arab caliphates expanding rapidly throughout the Near East, North Africa, and Southern Europe. This was another major threat with which the Byzantines could not deal with effectively. In the end, they lost some of their most precious territories, including Egypt and Syria, to the Arabs. This was a loss that considerably shrunk the empire's territory and weakened it further. After this period of decline, another ascent followed. Thanks to the many good emperors from the Macedonian dynasty, the period between 867 AD to 1056 AD, once more solidified the power of the Byzantine Empire. Known as the Macedonian Renaissance, this age not only brought territorial expansion, but also a flourishing of arts, culture, literature, and architecture. This golden era lasted for roughly 200 years, but history repeated itself. The empire once more experienced a major crisis. As if lulled into sleep by the Golden Age, the Dominion's leaders neglected many essential aspects of internal affairs. Most significantly, the military was quite weakened. This was due to the shift from a quick-reacting citizen army to a professional standing army. 
The latter required professional career soldiers and further increased the empire's need for foreign mercenaries, which were expensive and seldom kept allegiances. Things were further worsened by the Great Schism of 1054 AD. This was the split between Catholicism and Eastern Orthodoxy, an event that significantly shaped the world's future, one that still resonates today. Following the schism, the Normans began conquering parts of Italy and the empire's east, further weakening the Byzantines. To the west, Seljuk Turks utterly defeated the Byzantine army on August 26, 1071 AD, at the Battle of Manzikert. In just a decade after this victory, the Seljuk Empire expanded across entire Anatolia, coming just 90 kilometers from the walls of Constantinople. In essence, the Byzantine Empire would never again experience a long period of flourishing. As the world stage was turning into the medieval period in earnest, turbulence and tensions became almost constant. The political and religious scene in Europe was continuously shifting, and with ever-increasing volatility. This led to much instability, much of which was to spill over and irreparably influence Byzantium, just a shadow of what it once was. Financially weak, the empire made significant concessions to Genoese and Venetian traders, who now held a monopoly on the trade in the East. This led to tremendous tensions with Western Europe, culminating in 1204 AD during the Fourth Crusade. In this year, the devastating event known as the Sack of Constantinople could well be the final blow that brought the once mighty Byzantine Empire to its knees. In an unprecedented turn of events, the Crusaders, in alliance with the Italian merchants, betrayed their principles out of greed to settle their financial debts with the Byzantines. What followed was the merciless looting of one of the greatest cities of the world at the time. The town was utterly sacked and ravaged, with many precious relics stolen and sold in the West. This catastrophic event brought on the temporary end of the Byzantine Empire. It was split into several smaller crusader states, the chief of which was the Empire of Trezebond, the Despotate of Epirus, and the Empire of Nicaea. Still, this was not the end of the empire story. In 1261 AD, Constantinople was reconquered, heralding the restoration of the Byzantine Empire under the Paleologos dynasty. Nevertheless, it would never become what it was before the sack of its illustrious capital city. In the decades that followed, many of its cardinal weaknesses floated to the surface. It was still plagued by civil wars and internal instability, which were exploited by its rivals. This brought on one of the final blows for the Byzantines. As it was ravaged by a civil war between 1341 AD to 1347 AD, the neighboring Serbian ruler, Stefan Dusan the Mighty, took the opportunity to conquer an enormous part of Byzantine territories. He soon established a powerful Serbian Empire, which completely overshadowed Byzantium, becoming the region's foremost power. These events were the blows that the empire would never recover from. It entered a period of steep decline, while its neighbors constantly grew in strength. The foremost of these neighbors was the large and mighty Ottoman Empire, which was coming ever closer to Constantinople. Since that city was located at such a critical strategic position, it was only a matter of time before the Ottomans would descend upon it with all their military might. On May 29, 1453 AD, they did so when they managed to conquer Constantinople after two months of grueling siege. Today, that city is known as Istanbul. The fall of Constantinople also marked the final fall of the Byzantine Empire. After more than a thousand years of struggle, this once great empire disintegrated under the constant pressures of those who coveted its wealth and power. Its fall was a significant turning point in the history of the world. It allowed the Ottoman Empire to penetrate further into mainland Europe, setting into motion a series of events that would have lasting consequences. But most importantly, the rise and fall of the Byzantine Empire teaches us that even those that soar ever so high are bound to descend sooner or later. And often, that descent comes with a hard, hard landing. To learn more about the fall of the Byzantine Empire, check out our book, The Byzantine Empire, A Captivating Guide to Byzantium and How the Eastern Roman Empire Was Ruled by Emperors Such as Constantine the Great and Justinian. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. Also, grab your free Mythology Bundle ebook while it's still available. All links are in the description. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.